Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the Saturday and Peace Show, episode number 13, recorded on September 13th, 2023. That's a, that's a lot of 13, so hopefully that's not a bad sign. I guess it's, it's a Wednesday, so <laughs> luckily it's not a Friday, I guess. Maybe that'll help our luck. Um, but yeah, my name is Chris, and I'm your host today, and the Saturday and Peace Show is a show about answering questions, software development questions specifically, and technology questions. We also work on some open source projects, do some live coding, and just in general show kind of what it's like to be a developer and some of the problems you'll face and encounter. <clears throat> and we tend to do most things, this is like semi-live show, not a lot of editing goes into it, so uh, so you don't expect a bunch of like fast cuts like you would in some other videos. We're pretty much just going to let the camera run and only stop it if something, if I need to stop it for some reason, it's usually something pretty important. And we try not to blur or hide too much, um, just, you know, as needed. Just because, again, I want people to see what it's like to be a software development and see all the, the pros and cons. So hopefully these videos aren't too long, and too boring. But I don't know, maybe if they're boring, you can just watch them or listen to them when you go to sleep at night. All right, but today's episode, so if you haven't been following along for the past bunch of them, we kind of started off the show working on uh, a poll, an issue for the standard Ruby uh, linter, this one right here, and we've been working on a specific bug, which is this one right here, where basically there's a bug with the to-do file. Uh, so if you generate a to-do file, it's a bunch of stuff. It has a file with a bunch of errors that you want to ignore when you run the linter. But if you generate a to-do file and the to-do file already exists, it doesn't correctly create the new to-do file. Instead, it will ignore the, the new to-do file won't have the old to-do file stuff. So I've been working on this. Um, so some people were kind enough to report this bug. That's me, Mr. Big Red. So... Uh, and the reason they asked me to work on this is way back in the day uh, for standard, I was the one who originally added the, the generate to do capabilities to standard. I think I was like two years ago or something like that. So, so anyway, I love using the standard Ruby linter. It's a great little tool that I work, I use whenever I, I get a chance on Ruby projects. I like it a lot more than, oops. Uh, I like it a lot more than just plain old Rubicop, which is just sits on top because Rubicop is very restrictive with, or too restrictive, I think, to write any reasonable size program. Like you'll get linting errors for like your method lames are too long when they're longer than like 20 or 30 characters or something. And your your methods can't be longer than 10 lines. Like it's 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 really hard to write any reasonable program where the standard Ruby linter has more reasonable defaults and I find I rarely have to change them. Usually the only thing I do if it's a new project I'll just use the linter right from the get-go but oftentimes I'm working with old existing code um, so I'll, I'll use the, I'll, I'll use the standard Ruby linter created to do file and just kind of every time I do a PR and make changes I will remove things from the to do file. So anyway uh, so you can watch the old videos um, which you can find some I'll put some links in the comments below for the old video. So this one is actually, we're not going to actually do any coding today. All the coding is done, which is fantastic. So I'm just going to double, it's only been a couple days, but let's just double check. I didn't break anything, but all the coding's done. So today we're just going to do a, commit this PR. So this would be kind of an example of how you would create a PR for an open source project. Uh, but first of all, I need to, I just really want to double check that all the tests pass still. So I think, uh, and I also have to, so if I, let me check here. All right. Okay. So I haven't, so the last, we did some refactoring in the last video, which you can see here. Um, but I haven't committed, I haven't pushed these changes up. So we have, uh, so this is Git Kraken, but for those who can't tell, this is uh, what's been pushed to uh, the one of the, my little face there is what's been pushed to GitHub. And this one, just the computer is just the local one. Okay, will it say that it's local? Yeah, local. And uh, 
this one here. It's origin. So I guess as we could even uh, like if we did a git status here. Yeah, so our branch is ahead of the origin there by yeah, by just the one commit. So um Right, but what was I going to do? I was just going to run all the tests. So running rake in with the standard project will run all the tests, but it'll also run the standard Ruby linter on itself. So let's see if just, we'll just double check to see if it complains about any, uh, anything I need to lint. So give that a minute. If that, if that all passes, then I will push this change to my forked repo of standard. And we'll, so we'll push that and then, um, then we'll create the PR. So I'll, I'll, we'll go through how that works in a minute here. Okay. So that all looks good. Okay, great. And then I'm oh, just a little paranoid. Uh, make sure. I think that's how I can run standard on myself. Yeah. Okay. So that's all good. Right on. So that's great. So. Let's uh, push this. There we go. So now everything will be in GitHub. Awesome. Now if I go look, I think I have. Um, right. So this is a standard repo. This is my uh, fork of the repo. So um, this is where we have to create the pull request in my forked repository so way back I think in I don't know if I actually showed myself doing this but in a previous video or previously I would have had to go to the standard project and then create a fork um, oh yeah and I, hmm, apparently yeah all right so yeah and I create a fork of it and then um, yeah, apparently I created it for a, another client that I worked with there for a bit. That's oh right, when I added the original to do, I was working with a client and using standard, so that's why it's forked to um, fork. Right, right, that was a long time ago. Yeah, a couple years ago. Okay, so cool. Um, so now I'm in my personal. Uh, GitHub accounts, standard. So let's create this pull request, and then we can take a look at all the changes that I made to make sure. Uh, oh, I can't. Uh, is there a? Hmm. Dang it! There's probably a conflict. Uh, that makes me sad. Okay, uh, the other thing I should do is let's bring up that issue so I can have it open here. I'm just going to slide that off to the side so I can see what the issue is. Okay. Um, fixes number 565. Uh, Fixes and issue. Um, what's the best way to say this? So fixes number five sixty five, uh, which Where are all my changes? So I think we can leave this title like, oops, like that. So we just already exists. Now, um, 
wonder what show. Ugh, it's going to have conflicts. Right. Can't automatically merge. Oh, it makes me sad. Um, okay, I'll have to see what those conflicts are. You know, actually, let's... Hmm. Let's do... All right, so what's the best way to do this? Let's... Um... So this is my local one. Um... I don't want to do any of those. I want, what I actually want is um, So how do I, uh, okay. All right, so you're, this branch is, all right, this is what I want. I want to, right, well, that's all I commit. So it took me, took me a while to do this. Okay, so now main should be all synchronized. So now if I go back here and let's pull that. There we go. Now, if we just try to merge it here, we should, let's see. Let's see what what we got a conflict with. Oh, okay. So it's been modified but deleted. Text. Oh, I deleted that. That's interesting. Uh, okay. Wonder why I deleted that file. Okay, so, and this one just has some uh, builds config. It just has some mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to do file not loaded when generating to do file to death test to do merge. Um, test to do merge. Where did that come from? This is on main. Oh, well, maybe somebody, oh, did somebody already beat me to, I've recorded all these videos and someone beat me to this fix. Let's see. Um, September 8th. Somebody fixed that not too long ago. Oh, maybe, maybe that was, <laughs> oh, that would be super annoying. Um, let's see. Let's check this book. <clears throat> oh, somebody created that a long time ago. Um, Did you not, oh, did you not create a pull request? You just merged that right into the, what was that, what was that date I was looking at? September 8th. Uh, oh, this one. 581. Nope, that's not it. What's the...
Okay, now I'm really confused. Let's try and find that. Oh, it's this one. Oh no, that's oh, sorry. That's not what they made that change. They somebody made that change somewhere else. Okay, we're gonna actually have to look at the, the code here, I think. Music get blame. Um so Hmm. I'm just this test to do merged. When so this is on builds config tests. Okay, so oh I have it up here. Oh no, builds config. Uh I do have it up here, this one. Um oh right, it put all that. So show me the history of this. Oh, it was pretty recent. Remove some dead code. Oh, this is this is quite a while ago. Oh, I think I looked at this in a previous video where they. Fix test by avoiding building a full config store when it isn't needed. Uh, will it show me more? Oops. What method is this test? Okay. Does this look like it here? Oops. All right, test to do merged. So why did I delete the U? That's interesting. So I actually deleted fixture, test fixtures config U. Did I actually delete this test to do merged? <laughs> uh, can I cancel this? Where did I delete that U? Oh, right, there it is. Oh, remove redundant test for merging ignore rules. Oh, okay. So I actually, I actually got rid of this because it's a redundant test. Um, let's see if I can figure out why it's a redundant test. Updates build config test removed. Oh, right, because originally we just excluded entire files, I think. Right, that's what this, when I originally added this, but then someone else came along and, okay, this is coming back to me now. Um, they added specific offenses. Instead of excluding the whole file, it'll just exclude offenses from a particular file. That's right, so we don't need this, like this test is a weaker version of this test. That's why it can be removed. Okay, so we should make a note of that when we create this PR. That's why I got rid of this. Right, yeah, because another, if I remember correctly, another fellow added this. Um, let's see if I can 
Um, yeah, this this one here. This is the. This was the commit. Makes it, yeah an error to migrate. Yeah. So this one was the fellow. Um, how do I show all the? Oh, I don't want that. I want to see all the the changes for this commit. Show whatever here. Show all affected files. Okay, so like they would have had to make changes in yeah in the generate ignore as well, which they did. Right, right, yeah, because they made. Oh, it's a little hard to see. It's kind of squished in here. So I guess I can't remember what previous video I found this out in, but they actually someone my work and approved upon it, which is great. So instead of ignoring the entire file, which I think the one on the left is my original one there, the one on the right was they were just ignoring the particular offense instead of the entire file, which is a much better way to do it. So thank you very much for adding that. Okay, cool. So now we know why that exists. Okay, so now we can go Oops. Um, nope, wrong one. All right, we'll go back to our PR here. Okay. Uh, this. Uh, all right, where can I? Kind of wish when you write that, like you can't see all the changes, which is kind of a bummer. So let's, okay, let's open up Git Crack in here, and then we can take a look at all the changes here, right? So we got our conflicts, and then we got like our remove files. Was it actually modified? Um, oh, that's a good question. What would they have changed in that view? Um, thing stuff. Um, and then what does the U? Oh, it doesn't show it, of course. Cancel. Thing stuff. Oh, is it used elsewhere? Let's just double check here. Um, so what do we want? U slash dot standard YAML. Oops. The merge messages. Um, oh yeah, because I merged it. Okay, so that's the only place it's used. So I think you'd still get rid of it because if we look, um, show all affected files again. Where's that? U? There's a T. Oh, that's interesting. Who would have updated this file? Get uh, show history. Oh, okay, so doesn't hmm. What does Build config test. Uh, 
Oh, it uses T. Well, I guess I could try putting This is pretty recent, so. Um, so maybe what we can do is, right, so it looks like Okay, so again, these two tests are redundant, so maybe we could clean that up. Oh, I thought this would be just a quick merge, but we saw some conflict. So maybe we can just get rid of this offenses merge, and we get rid of the T, and we keep the U one, because it looks like it's been... That's a better fix. Like, it's testing a bunch of stuff. Okay, maybe that's what we do. We get rid of the... Oh, okay. Huh. So... Okay, that's where we... But I have to go. Um, so I'm going to have to end this video here, but... So maybe what I'll do... Hmm, 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 hmm. Um, okay, I guess I'll have to figure out if I'm just going to, this will be its own video or if I will, <laughs> see, they never, they never end properly. Um, I guess that 13 kind of bit us a little bit merging problems, but yeah, okay. I think we got a good solution here. Uh, so I can, that's what I'll do. And I guess I, here, I'll even point out the reason I'm running away is because uh, I need to host the Legacy Code Rocks virtual meetup. So, I guess a little shameless plug or anything, but if you want to come join us and talk about Legacy Code, it's every Wednesday. It's 1 p.m. Eastern Time or 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, but yeah, come join. Come join a bunch of people who talk about Legacy Code, which is usually not all mainframes. It's oftentimes just old Ruby applications or... Um, just, just some old application you have kicking around and we'll talk about how to fix it. Or sometimes it's just therapy for people to vent. Um, yeah, come join us to Lake Sequel Rocks. Okay, but back to this. I will, I guess it'll be either next video or maybe I will pause this video and extend it. Hmm, I'll have to decide later. Okay, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. Just in case I'm going to end this video. <laughs> I'll just say thank you very much for watching, and I hope your day is going really well and that all the 13s are not bad luck for you, and that you're coding, and that you, when you next time you merge, you don't have a merge conflict, and you just smoothly merge things. So thank you very much, and have a good day. All the best.